Hello everyone. Today we start discussion of CPU scheduling algorithms. CPU scheduling deals with the problem of deciding which of the processes in the ready queue is to be allocated the CPU. The most common known algorithms are first come first third, shortage of first, priority, round robin, multi-level queue, and multi-level feedback queue scheduling. In the first come first serve scheduling algorithm, the process which arrives first gets executed first, or we can say that the process which requests the CPU first gets the CPU allocated first. The implementation of the first come first serve policy is easily managed with a first in first out queue. When a process enters the red queue, its process control block is linked into the tail of the queue. When the CPU is free, it's allocated to the process at the head of the queue. The running process is then removed from the queue. The code for the first come first serve scheduling is simple to write and understand. First come first serve scheduling is non primitive scheduling algorithm. Once a CPU has been allocated to a process, that process keeps the CPU until it releases the CPU, either by terminating or by requesting I.O. operation. Consider the following set of processes that arrive at time zero with the length of the CPU burst given in milliseconds. Process one needs 14 milliseconds, process two, eight, and process three, four. We'll use the Gantt chart to calculate the average waiting time and the average turnaround time. Gantt chart is a part chart that illustrates the scheduling, including the start and finish time of each process. Since all the processes are in the queue, in the first come per served, we start first by process one. It ends at time 14. After that, Process two, it's at time 22, and the last one is process three, it will end time 26. The average turn around time equals to process one needs 14 milliseconds, process two, it's at time 22 and the process three at time 26, which is 62 over three, which is 20.7. And the average waiting time equals to process one, zero, process two, waits 14 nanoseconds, and the process three with 22 nanoseconds, which is 36 over three. So the average waiting time is 12. Suppose that the processes arrive in a sequence B3, B2, B1. In this case, Process three will be served first, and it will end at time four. Then process two at time 12. Then process one at time 26. So the average waiting time in this case equals two zero for process three. Process two waits for four milliseconds, and process one waits for 12 over three which is 5.3, much less than 12, as in this case. And this is one disadvantage of the first compare serve scheduling, that it does not guarantee the optimal average waiting time. Suppose that not all the processes were in the ready queue, process two arrives in time two, and the process three arrives in time four. 
in this case, first process one is scheduled, zero to 14. Then we have the process two, 22. Then the process three, 26. For example, to compute the average 10 around time, we have for process one, 14 nanoseconds, plus for process two, not 22, 22, and we have to subtract the arrival time, which is two, 22 minus two, and the process three, 26, and we should subtract the arrival time, which is four, which is 56 over three, which is about 18.7. And the average waiting time, process one does not wait, Process two waits 14 minus two, and the process three waits 22 minus the survival time for over three, which is 30, over three, 10. So the average waiting time in this case equals to 10. Pairs come per serve the scheduling can cause long waiting times especially when the first jobs take too much CPU time. Another disadvantage for the first come first served scheduling algorithms. Suppose that we have a set of processes B1, B2, etc., Bn, and suppose that B1 process is CPU pounded, and all the other processes B2 through Bn are I.O. pounded. First B1, which is CPU pounded, would be scheduled, and it will hold the CPU for a long time, and all the other I.O. pounded processes should wait. If a process one requests I.O. operation, and the CPU will be free, all the other I.O. pounded processes will be scheduled, and they will finish their I.O. operation quickly, and move again into the ready queue, again waiting for the CPU. During this time, all the I.O. devices are idle, and even the CPU will be idle, since the I.O. pounded processes do not need the CPU for a long time. They quickly will return to the ready queue. This effect is called combo effect, where all processes wait for the one big process to get off the CPU. This effect results in low CPU and I.O. utilization. To conclude, first come, first serve scheduling, a simple CPU scheduling, easy to implement using first in, first out queue. The average waiting time is not optimal. It suffers from combo effect, and it is not suitable for time shared operating systems. Our next topic is shortest job first and shortest remaining time first scheduling. For today, that's all. Thank you.